Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing another installment of my Dog Trainer React series where I share my experience with you guys as a certified dog trainer and pet nutritionist. Today I'm going to be doing another Glam and Gore video. This one is going to be her finding out if my dogs like water video. Um, I've not seen this yet so I'm going to be watching it live with you guys and sharing what I personally think as a professional um, about her techniques and the way she goes about this. As with everything, there's lots of different theories and experiences with dog training and so I'm just going to be using what I know as a positive reinforcement based trainer um, and using it in this situation. So with all of that said, let's get on with the video. Today I wanted to answer the age old question, are my dogs water dogs? <laughs> because why not? I was inspired to do this because it is really, really hot. Like really, really hot. And I was thinking, I wish my dogs were water dogs because we could just go to the beach and not have it be a thing. And then I thought, I don't know if my dogs are water dogs. So definitely, even if you think that your dog is a water dog, I have a lab mix and she just learned how to swim in the last couple months. And she's almost two. Um, failure on my part, maybe, but trust me, I've tried. She's not the biggest fan of water, and so you should never assume that your dog enjoys the water, because chances are they're not the biggest fans, um, especially if they haven't been introduced in a positive way. So taking your dogs into a nice location where you can get them experience with water without overwhelming them is always going to be a good plan, especially, especially, especially if you have an in-ground pool in your home, you should 150,000% have a trainer help you teach your dog at least where the stairs are in case they were to fall in, they can find the stairs and be safe. So definitely part of dog ownership, giving them new experiences, and this is a very important one in my opinion. I have a theory. Creature has never had an actual real full bath. He's a puppy that smells amazing, so I've left him alone. And Ripley has had not such a great history with baths in the past, as seen by this photograph. That is kind of how I expect things to go for Ripley, and I'm hoping that Creature, because he's a big goofy dog, will really enjoy the water. So just because your dog hates baths doesn't necessarily mean that they're gonna hate water in general. A lot of dogs that I know love the water. They love lakes, they love creeks, they love all of the things, they love hoses. But the second you get them in a bathtub, it's a no-go. Um, and a lot of the time it's because baths are maybe a little bit of user error from the owner um, as far as making it a positive experience. But it's also a matter of choosing to go in the water and not wanting to go in water. So just because your dog doesn't like baths doesn't mean that they won't like swimming in general. They've already kind of demolished my theory because I couldn't even rinse off our pool without one of them absolutely freaking out. Guess which one? Honestly, this is a pretty positive response from her one dog, Ripley, um, just because you can tell from her body language that when the water is gone, she's still kind of searching for it. And even though you do see her lips curl back, it's more in a like playful manner instead of that big C curve that you see from like really fearful um, defensive dogs and not quite the same eye shape as you would see from an extremely fearful dog where you see the big whale eye. Um, most importantly, because you're not necessarily going to be looking for those little tiny details, um, if once you take the water away they're still searching for it in a way that seems very excited and outgoing as opposed to cowering and in fear, then chances are they at least had a little bit of fun. Um, I also wouldn't push it too much, so taking it away every once in a while, every couple of seconds even, just to reassess where they're at with it is going to be your best bet, great idea. 
Uh, my dog, if you squirt the hose in her in any direction, she'll tuck tail and she'll run. Um, and then she'll run usually like 15 feet and start looking for it to see if it's going to be coming at her again. And that's from me where I've never squirted her with a water bottle, never squirted her with the hose. She's just afraid of the hose, does not like the hose, doesn't want anything to do with the hose. So that reaction, pretty positive. Uh, creature's response, her other dog that didn't really have much of a response, that's also totally normal. Neither one of them necessarily means that they're afraid of the hose or afraid of water in general. Um, it's just two different reactions to a stimuli and so things to be aware of. So we're just gonna film us filling up the pool because I literally cannot fill up this pool without my psychotic crying dog in the background wanting to strangle herself to be able to jump into this pool. So you could see from her body language just in that little clip it wasn't enough to really get much for me to point out to you specifically. Um, but when a dog is stressed, their tongue's going to be out, they're going to be panting, but they can also be stressed in a positive way and stressed in a negative way. Uh, stressed in a positive way would be excitement, um, but you'll get that little whiny sound in both cases as well. So if you are worried that your dog is stressed, they do get sweaty paws, you'll see them panting a lot, they'll kind of be shifty-eyed and looking around a lot. Um, some dogs may come towards you and might try to like hide behind you, hide under you, use you as their protector. Um, other dogs when they're stressed or nervous could take on a more dominant position and be right in front of you and be very protective of you. Um, but from what I see in this video here, Ripley's not expressing any of those kinds of reactions. It seems to be very much more she wants to just play in the water again. Um, so that's a positive thing to look out for, um, as well as the stress you want to check for with your dog as well. Free the beast! Okay. Go! What? Excuse me? That's what you've been crying about for the last half an hour? There we go! There we go! She's thinking about it. So this is all a very, very good reaction um, if you're wanting your dog to enjoy water or seeing if your dog has any interest. Um, you can see that she's not necessarily jumping in the water or going for the hose, but she is approaching the water and showing interest, um, which great sign means that, again, showing interest, interested in the situation and seems to be enjoying herself. <laughs> Now she's not sure. Yep, so you can kind of see she jumped in, which is awesome. Uh, she's kind of exploring it. She's not showing any fear. She is a little bit unsure. You can tell just can, kind of the way sh she's shifting her leg up. Um, that's usually just a sensation of like you're in water. Um, so kind of like you, when you walk into water, you kind of wade in. You're kind of like, it's, it's a similar thing. She's just kind of testing her environment. Um, and a little bit unsure of the difference in how your body feels when you're in water. All right, we'll turn on the spray so that you have maximum fun. Come on. Go, girl. <laughs> yeah, none of this is showing signs of fear. Um, this is all just fun. Oh boy, get in here. Come on, get in. Good. And you see right there, a little bit less graceful. Um, creature was showing interest and especially with both mom and dog in the water already. If you're trying to introduce your dog to water or if you're trying to get your dog to enjoy water more, using that technique of kind of we're having fun out here and you're not uh, may be enough to get them interested. That's what we ended up having to do with Luna who was bred to swim and should be totally fine but it's a good incentive. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, no. <laughs> there we go. And then right as he's jumping out, um, you should always make sure that your dog has an escape plan. So if you're boxing them in, like definitely 100% no. Um, they should have a way to get themselves out of a situation that they're not comfortable in. And they will probably come back and show more interest and slowly ease into it themselves. But the fact that he did that shows a lot about himself and his ability to problem solve 
um, as a dog that should be a natural ability um, but as a person you want to make sure that you have those opportunities for your dog. The boy come in! The boy! Come on! Come on! And he's perched on the side, he's a little bit unsure, his first reaction to getting in the water was a little bit of shock, um, hence him jumping out, but you can tell that he's definitely kind of working up, mentally preparing, um, and wants to be involved with their, what they're doing, he just needs to work up that nerve. Um, but again, body language, showing a little bit of unease as far as a new experience goes, but nothing that I would be concerned with and nothing that I would say would turn into a negative experience. <laughs> okay, take a break, take a break. It's a lot for you in one day, you know? So the fact that she's stopped and allowing her dog to take a break is super, super awesome. Uh, with anything, you don't want to overdo it, especially with dogs, because once they get too stimulated, that's when weird and dangerous things can start to happen. Um, even like with playing fetch, if your dog loves fetch, loves fetch, would fetch all day, once you get to a certain point, it can be a little bit dangerous. Um, I've seen dogs fetch and fetch and fetch and fetch and fetch and then throw up their whole stomach and then try to keep going or they'll go and go and go and go and go and then get severely dehydrated because they haven't drank anything. Um, so there's always a limit. So you want to make sure that you cut something off before it starts becoming negative. So playing with the water, playing with the water, playing with the water. Stop. Let them chill. Catch their bearings. And then you can go again. I'm not saying you need to end early. Just give them little breaks. Otherwise they're going to keep going and going and going until they're exhausted. And they get to be like little kids. And when they're tired, that's when all hell breaks loose. And we don't want that because it's not fun for anybody. So giving your dogs breaks. Yes, please. Thank you. Creature, I'm not trying to traumatize you. This is your first time. We've like cleaned poop off of his feet and that's about it. Oh my god! Oh girl! Oh girl, good, good. Yep, so right there you can see that she took some time just breathing and getting herself back under control um, and then was expressing a want for more that's what you're going to want to look out for once they've kind of settled down for a couple minutes and then they're expressing that they want more, you can give them more. He's curious. That's all we need. He's curious. That's all we need. So, I love my kid. She's doing everything right. Just that even little comment of, he's curious, that's all we need. Absolutely. Don't expect your dog to go from never being around water or bad experience with water to loving water and loving swimming all in one. It can take months depending on your dog's exposure to it, how often they're exposed to it, um, reactions to being exposed to something, and then different negative reactions um, that they can hold on to for a really long time. So honestly, I'm super, super impressed that he's even like on the sides of the pool looking in and interacting at all. That's a super good place to be at right now. I don't know how much um, he's been exposed to water outside of this video, but that's awesome to see. And I love the fact that she has her expectations at a reasonable level of Ripley, who has more experience with water, is enjoying herself and playing, and Creature, who maybe doesn't have nearly as much experience, he's a lot younger, um, just getting as involved as he feels comfortable and she's not forcing anything on him, she's not pressuring him in any way, and I really love and respect that from her. Oh, he's getting brave now that the hose isn't loud and intimidating. So that's another really insightful observation. Um, like I said, some dogs, they like different things about the water. My dog hates the hose. She tolerates the lakes. She's at the point now where she's co very comfortable wading and that's like her thing. She loves to wade in the water. Um, hoses are very loud. They can be very um, aggressive in water pressure and kind of seem sporadic depending on how you're spraying it. And this can make some dogs very nervous, especially if it's not something that they're used to. Um, so definitely kind of playing around with what kind of water and how the water is exposed to them is very beneficial and you can get a lot of insight there. Will you do the water dog? Will she swim? 
She's like Spider-Man. So that little recline, it's a very instinctual thing. We do it too. Um, but it's essentially kind of a response to not wanting to all of a sudden be dunked in. Um, I, do I say this is a negative thing that she's putting her dog over the water? Not necessarily. Um, if your dog goes beyond just a natural like reflex of pulling their legs up and starts breathing really fast or showing signs of stress that we talked about earlier, the panting, that kind of stuff, um, definitely <laughs> kind of let them chill um, and don't pressure them because it's those kinds of situations where if you're not paying attention to your dog's body language that they can turn and bite or act um, like a dog when they're scared. So definitely be aware of your dog's body language. Do you know your dog better than I do? Um, but just a general look for signs of stress that we talked about earlier as well as introduce them to water in different ways. I would not recommend that this be the first reaction to water that they get. I would recommend um, getting something shallow enough that they can walk into on their own. Um, but just to be aware of. Yeah. Wanna swim? Wanna swim? Yay! You like it? Look over here. Okay, okay, okay. So see when she kind of started to doggy paddle preparing to be in the water and then kind of spazzed out and her body started twisting? That's, you, you want to stop at that point. So um, there's a lot of safety things there for both the dog and the person. The dog can flip out of your hands and get hurt. Um, you can get hurt from nails or from teeth. Um, so the fact that Anthony just kind of let it chill um, and put her back onto shore um, once you started seeing those signs. That's excellent. And again, ideal, like I've put my dog into water and gotten these reactions. People do it all the time. Um, but I would not recommend this route if you are getting your dog interested in water for the first time. See if you swim. No, he wants out. <laughs> Yep, so again, you saw him kind of reach sideways, go for shore. Um, you can see in his face, him being creature of the dog, um, uneasiness, and immediately, you can also feel that too when you're holding them, immediately taking him out of the water. That's awesome. We, we'd love to see that. Do it, swim! so that was a much more positive reaction was kind of the flopping 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 and then being okay being in the water so we saw a more positive reaction from the dog this time therefore we're able to proceed if he would have kind of freaked out again take the dog straight out good. you're out of water good <laughs> there we go so like i said a couple of times i keep talking about stimulation. Dogs can become very overstimulated very fast so for him being in the water for just that couple of seconds was more than enough time than he needed so he got right out. So again having those opportunities for your dog to exit an uncomfortable situation very important for your dog's life in general. Ah, okay if you're scared you can get out. We're not about traumatizing dogs here. Yes so again Oh my god. So her dog wanted to get out. She let him get out. We don't want to traumatize dogs. You don't want to traumatize your dog. I don't want you to traumatize your dog because if I have to deal with trying to untrain them and get them used to something, it's a lot easier for a trainer to deal with a dog that has not had negative experiences, which it we're going to deal with dogs that have had negative experiences. It's part of the job. But if you can prevent those, it's easier on everybody's part so much easier. It makes your dog's life so much better if you can just avoid those situations as much as possible. Look, I'll sit here with you. I should have worn a bathing suit. Uh, come on, good girl. <laughs> She's like, island. There's an island here. You can see that Ripley is much more comfortable in the water, um, but even though she is much more comfortable, she would still prefer to be on something solid and comforting, like Mikey, her owner. 
Um, this is totally normal. Dogs can love swimming all they want, but even if you stick a lab who loves water out in the lake and you're there, they're, they're gonna probably try to come climb you. It, it's a thing. <laughs> swimming is tiring. But this is just another example of being overstimulated and then finding a comfort zone. So for her, she can still be in the water. She just wants that comfort of solid ground beneath her and dog mom. <laughs> You're gonna pop it, honey, with all this, whatever this is. I'm glad that she addressed the popping thing because an inflatable pool is not something that I would recommend for dogs. Um, just because they do have nails and they can easily pop between nails and mouth. If you dremel your dog's nails, it's going to be a lot safer. Um, but ultimately, if you can get something other than an inflatable pool, it's going to save you money and hassle. So we've done two tests so far. One is just the hose, and the results of that work backwards of what I expected. So, yeah, like I said, dogs are different. Um, if it's their first experience with water, then, you know, a hose might be too much of a stimulant, um, but every dog has their own personal preference. The body of water test has gone how I expected, although I thought the creature would be more into it. I really did. Big bodies of water, especially when they can't touch, are kind of the hardest for dogs because you do have that uncertainty of not being able to touch. Um, like I've mentioned with my dog a couple times now, she's a lab mix. She loves wading in water as long as she can comfortably touch. She is happy, she'll willingly go in. Um, it's just that transition into actually swimming that she's super unsure about and has only done a couple times for me. Um, granted, she is young, she's like a year and a half, but still. Um, so it's something that you really have to work with your dog on is getting them comfortable actually swimming and not being able to have the security of being able to have their paws on a hard surface underneath them. Um, it's just naturally difficult. The third test will be, does Ripley's love of the hose outweigh her fear of a body of water? So yeah, teaching your dog to become more comfortable in open um, or deeper bodies of water. The best way to do it is going to be taking something that they enjoy a lot and putting it just out of reach. Um, a lot of people will use fetch as a way to get their dog into it, where they'll throw a ball and slowly get it further and further out so that th to get the ball they have to keep going slightly further and further out and eventually they just kind of have to succumb to swimming. Um, so that works for a lot of people. Treats is another one. Using yourself is another great one. Um, just do it little bits by bits and give them plenty of room to opt out if they would like. All right, well, I'm gonna end the video here before it gets to be way, way, way too long. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something, most importantly. If you are interested in seeing more videos from me, please be sure to subscribe to my channel down below, as well as give this video a big thumbs up. Leave a comment on anybody else you would like me to react to or any questions that you may have from me, and that is all. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.